Joel Grout. I worked for facilities doing plumbing, carpentry, fixing all kinds of stuff, jack of all trades. When did you first come to the college? 1984. So the college must have looked a lot different than it does today. A lot different. When I started here, we were moving out Hartford Road, and we were filling the low building. Low building opened in 84. That's when I was hired for the low building. But even after the low building opened, probably uh, more than half the college was down at the East Campus, right? Yes. Was that a challenge, keeping those buildings serviceable? Oh, it was, because it was very old buildings. And they were supposed to be temporary buildings. And they'd be in 35-year-old temporary buildings, but they were supposed to be temporary buildings. So there's a lot of rot down there. We did a lot of work in keeping them usable. Now, as I recall, in the, la the last couple of years that we used those buildings, there were, uh, what, rodents and termites who'd... Uh, they here? say. <laughs> <laughs> we say no. They say yes. <laughs> So some people say it's disputable. <laughs> so, uh, and then obviously you were here when the campus moved up to the uh, LRC and the AST buildings. Yes. Is the work that you do different now than it was 25 years ago? I used to be able to say, I'm caught up. Now I say, I'm six, seven days behind. I'm never going to get caught up again. With the repairs of the newer buildings and the repairs of the lower building, it's never going to get caught up. Is there just like more work that needs more to be More work, same amount of people for repairs. What's, um, who are some of the people you remember from the early years here, mid 80s? Well, Carl Macarella, he was my boss when I first started. I'm not sure how long after I left. I started, he left, but he was in charge. There was Stephen Galvin, Jack Scheidemann, Marie Sullivan, Dr. Vincent, Gail Dunowitz, Jan Brennan, they were all here. <laughs> and was, uh, you must have worked for Pete Negrola also. Pete Negrola. Yeah. He took over for Carl when Carl retired and became my boss. Yeah. And Helen, Helen Baboni, my mother-in-law. A lot of names. A lot of names. A lot of names, lot of names you don't remember. <laughs> What's the most uh, challenging part of your job? She's trying to be everywhere at once. You know, we have plumbers, electrician, HVAC guys, and then I do basically the rest of it. So just trying to keep your day scheduled and going where you're going. It can be a lot. Looking back over 25 years, well, more than 20, about 26, 27, 28 years. 28 years, and next week it'll be 29. <laughs> are, are there some funny moments that stick out in your mind? Funny, embarrassing? <laughs> mm, suitable for family viewing. Some of the maintenance guys, we had one maintenance guy who went down to the shop there and closed the garage doors, had his fingers stuck in the doors. He was stuck like this in the doors for like a half hour. And he's screaming and crying. And, and until somebody came around, he was stuck there. <laughs> We had a guy who fell asleep on a tractor and was just sitting on a band shell idling and the tractor just sleeping there. And, and the, and the a, tractor was idling. Idling and he was just sitting there and he was just... <laughs> <laughs> Paul Rizzo. Paul Rizzo was here back then. Mm -hmm. Have you always worked uh, the daytime shift? I worked... I was hired for second shift. But in the summertime, when I started, we all went on days. And I did second shift custodians for two years. And then I went to third shift for like a semester. And then I went into grounds. I worked grounds for three or four years. And then I came inside and started doing repairs. And who's your current uh, supervisor? Darlene Mancini Brown. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to share about? Uh, well, how, how have you seen the college change in 20, 29 years? It's definitely a lot busier, bigger. The students have changed. They're not as casual as they used to be. They're more just come in and leave, come in and leave. One of the comments made by a lot of people is the culture. And my recollection of you guys is that you were always there to move things, to help, to do whatever is necessary. And I don't know if you've moved from the kind of, I'll, 
handyman, I can do everything to kind of specialists? Is that well, my title is actually plumbing, but I do everything. Whatever happens, you gotta you be there. You know, if a girl locks her key in a, in a locker, lock her key inside it, I open a locker for her. I did have one, one funny story when um, a girl came to us, she was all upset. She said, I dropped my keys in the toilet. I said, and you stood up. She, she says, yes. I said, that was the first mistake. Because <laughs> when you stand up, the toilet's flush. <laughs> She said, but it was dirty water. I said, but it was your dirty water. You should have grabbed those keys. <laughs> he says, what do I do now? I said, nothing. They're gone. <laughs> so she had to replace her keys, I guess. Yes. She had to wait for it. Back to this culture, though. What? I mean, you guys could have said, that's not my job. I don't think I ever heard anybody say that. Why? Because it is my job. We're here to help. Everybody who comes to the campus. Who told you? I'm curious how that. It just came along as common, common courtesy, common sense. Okay. I've always helped people as are much as you could. Huh? Are the other? Uh, yeah, yeah, we all are. Yeah. We, That's unusual, you know. Well, I don't know if it is here or not. No, no. I mean, unusual compared to other institutions. Yes. Yeah, because they're a lot more staggered out. Cause I did go to. I went to a. Capital Community College last week, okay. and they only have like four people working there, yeah. and the rest are all contract contracted out. So we are one of the last ones that actually have our own staff and no contractors for cleaning or repairs. What would you change in terms of the culture at uh, MCC now if you could, if there were empowered to do so? What suggestions would you make to the president? I would hire more people for the repairs and the upkeep of the college because it, it's just not it's not happening the way it used to. We used to it would change filters every month. I don't think they're being done at all now. Oh, they are being done, but it's not being done on a monthly schedule. Mm -hmm. As the same as in grease traps, they're just not being done on it. Now we're fixing them when they call us and say they're broken. Is, are the facilities just too big for the staff you guys have? I think so. For the, for the high-tech equipment compared to what we used to have, it's a whole different world. Is there any talk about adding staff? No, because there's just no money for it, they say. And according to square footage of what the college is, this is supposed to be enough for us. Okay, but clearly it's not. Not for the equipment we have. You mentioned your mother-in-law, but your mother also worked. Oh, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you did that to me. Yes, I, my mother worked here. Seal, <laughs> seal grout. <laughs> I forgot all about her. <laughs> and I never forget about seal grout because she's the one who always got me in trouble. That's right. Yeah. So did you get your mom, mother-in-law, her job? Or no. The, no. Uh, when no I one. applied for this job, my mother-in-law didn't even tell anybody that I was her son-in-law because she didn't want to do it in favoritism. And my mother didn't want me to work here. Really? What she didn't want me to be a custodian. What she didn't want me to be a custodian. Okay. Has she come around? <laughs> she did. Yeah. She okay. did. Okay. She passed away six years ago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you could change anything about the 28, 29 years you've been here, what would, would there be anything you'd change? No. I think it's been fun all along. If I can't have fun anymore, that's when I have to leave. Because I've always had fun with the great people, and I've always enjoyed myself. And you've always been very open, very comfortable talking to people. Uh, oh, definitely. And, and funny, too, actually. <laughs> I try. <laughs> when, you, when you started, did you think you'd be here this long? No. No. The plan was, it was a, the plan was a 20-year plan. I was going to stay here for 20 years and then move down to Virginia. But things didn't work out, so we ended up staying. So we'll, we'll have to look forward to seeing you past your 30th uh, anniversary here? No. Probably four more years. Probably four. Four is the max. Okay. Did, you get a, did you get a distinction that there were uh, pecking order levels as people related to you? Meaning, you know, your maintenance on faculty kind of mindset? No. No, I never had that. 
And if I did have it with one or two straggly people, we took care of the problem. Yeah. I've always been treated as, I have always been treated as equal here, myself personally. You have one or two faculty that, but it always worked out. Yeah. And I mean, even when you were a dean here, we always had fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was uh, Chuck Police like when he was a dean? How, how would you describe him? Very casual. Yeah. Very casual dean. Fun. I, did, yeah. Yeah. I think we were, you know, we tried being casual here. <laughs> Anything else? I think that's a wrap. I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Joel.